In today's video, we have lots to talk about, including some off-season speculation. Today, we're looking at some trade rumors involving Marty Natchez of the Carolina Hurricanes. Where may he end up? We've heard a few teams that are reportedly very interested in the young player. So we'll take a look at a couple of trades that are possible to go down in his regard. We're also going to take a look at the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's some speculation that they're going big game hunting on a goaltender. Plus, we're also going to take a look at some UFA rumors around the team and what might happen with some of their top UFAs already internal, like Max Dome and Tyler Bertuzzi plus other names on the market they might be linked to. We also have big news out of Carolina regarding the GM Don Waddell resigning today. We're going to also recap last night's game one of the Western Conference Final and more news from around the league coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have lots to talk about today. Let's dive right in and get started. First with a recap of the Western Conference final game one action that went down last night, which saw the Edmonton Oilers take the first game with a double overtime victory. Um, seeing Connor McDavid score the winning goal early in double overtime. Um, certainly was a, I think it was a really entertaining, fun game, pretty close on both sides. I thought the Oilers again played extremely well defensively, didn't give up a lot when they did. Stuart uh, Skinner was fairly good. Uh, a couple of the goals that the Dallas Stars did score. Um, I wouldn't want to say that they're completely lucky breaks, but they were. One was a breakdown. Brett Kulak uh, completely whiffed on a pass out of the zone which left them all alone against Skinner. That goal was certainly uh, you know, a mistake that you don't really see coming. And, of course, the uh, which was Tyler Sagan. The second Sagan goal, which tied the game fairly late in the third period, uh, was a little bit of a lucky break in a way. There was another one of his teammates took a shot on net. It went off a skate, came right to him on the side of the net, and he had a wide-open cage. Um, so both of the Dallas goals were... Um, it's certainly a result of hard work, but a bit of a break at the same time. Uh, whereas the Oilers' goals originally with Leon Dreisaitl and Zach Hyman both scoring early second period goals uh, were a little different. And McDavid, oh my God, what a what an overtime he had. Um, the first shift of overtime, he gets a double minor for a high stick on Matt Duchesne. Um, it's hard to imagine. He argued the call. He didn't like it. He thought his stick was being held and didn't even realize it got him. Like It was certainly... 100% accidental but at the same time like Duchesne had him in a pretty good stick check and he couldn't get a stick loose and when he did it finally it came up and nicked uh, Duchesne in the face um, so it was as much as a lot of Oilers fans and McDavid didn't like it it was technically the right call uh, fortunately for McDavid his teammates killed it off that penalty kill which has been so good in these playoffs continued to be really solid for them um, and then of course McDavid getting the winning goal which just course you know good way to get some uh, retribution after that um not going his way so the first shift of first overtime he gets a major uh you know, to double minor penalty the first shift of overtime two he gets the winning goal 32 seconds in on a great play from evan bouchard great read puck was rimmed around bouchard gets it on the boards hits mcdavid out front for a nice redirection into the net it was a really nice play um a lot of times especially in overtime, you'd see a lot of defensemen probably just uh, shoot that puck back in deep and do a safe play, but not Bouchard. He's always um, thinking ahead about scoring and being an offensive guy, and um, thankfully he was because it set up the, the overtime winner for McDavid. So McDavid, Drysaddle, Hyman, their top guys all coming through with goals last night. Um, so they didn't get the secondary scoring, but their secondary players did all very much contribute defensively and on the PK, and Skinner was good when he needed to be for the most part. Like I said, the, the two goals, that Dallas scored um, I don't really think you can blame Skinner at all really like I said the first one Kulak whiffs on it seconds wide open by himself the second one went off a skate hits comes the second on the open side of the net so like really Skinner was good I mean Jake Ottinger was pretty good too um, he certainly he robbed McDavid also in the first overtime as well McDavid was patient went all the way around just couldn't raise it enough and Otter got it like it was it was a crazy play. Uh, it was a solid game on both sides. Like I said before, I expect this series to be a long, deep series, and I still feel that way after the first game. Uh, lots of news today we're going to jump into, some rumors and speculation about some offseason stuff too. Uh, one of the bigger news items, which there is a dedicated video on the channel from earlier, so I'm not going to go in too deep here, but uh, Don Waddell of the Carolina Hurricanes is the GM for the past decade resigned today. Um, for some, it wasn't a surprise. For a lot of us, it was. Uh, I guess there's been a lot of 
you know, talk behind the scenes that this could happen. It just wasn't really made public by any insiders or uh, news reporters. So a um, little bit of a surprise situation. We did hear rumblings of this yesterday, um, but here we are. Um, so essentially after 10 plus years in the organization, Don Waddell has moved on. Um, some speculate if it's a contract issue, it couldn't come to terms on a new deal because his contract was expiring. Um, so there's that possibility, but some say that even if Don, Tom Dundon, the owner, come to him with a uh, contract extension with a, you know, good money and everything like that, that he still would have walked. That he just he wanted out, he wanted to do something different. Uh, so we'll see. I'm not sure exactly what that all means or what all went on behind the scenes to lead him to come to that conclusion. But uh, Eric Tulski, a longtime assistant GM, is now the interim general manager of the Hurricanes. I suspect he will most likely be the full time GM at some point here in the near future, but the Canes are going to conduct a full search to make sure that, uh, that he's the guy they want to go with. Um, not shocking. They, they would do that, but I guess for Don Waddell, he went to Tom Dunn this morning after some of the speculation leaked out yesterday and just said, it's time. I think I need to part ways and, and move on. And it's just that simple. Uh, there was talk yesterday that Don Waddell had already been given permission to speak to other teams uh, ahead of his contract expiring and that he did interview at the Columbus Blue Jackets. Of course, they have a GM opening there right now. So clearly it makes sense. Um, he would probably jump near to the front of the line of top candidates they've spoke to. So uh, we'll see if he ends up landing the job there or not. Um but yeah, he's certainly linked to a few other teams. There was an article from some other reporters suggesting that the Blackhawks or Sabres could also be teams that he could land with because he's uh, well experienced. He doesn't necessarily have to be a GM. He could end up with another team in a president of hockey ops role uh, or like a senior advisor or even on the business operations side instead of hockey ops. He's very well experienced and uh, got a great resume. So he could end up in a variety of things. So we'll see where he ends up. Uh, for right now, Carolina... Uh, of course, moving on without him with Eric Tulski. Um, apparently, according to Pierre Lebrun of the Athletic, just to stay with the Hurricanes for a minute, uh, they, of course, we know they have a ton of UFAs, and they're definitely going to be a different-looking team next year for sure. Uh, so far, they've been pretty aggressive on the Jake Gensel front, trying to retain him, talking to him in his camp. Um, they'd really like to sign Gensel to a long-term deal. So that's uh, somebody who they've kind of prioritized as, uh, top priority right now so expect uh, that to have a good chance to come together no guarantees of course but that's what they're aiming for amongst their ufa defensemen which include brett pesci uh, and jalen chatfield apparently brady shea is a top priority among their ufa d there's a better chance as of today that pesci hits the market and leaves compared to shea there's a feeling around the league according to lebron that shea is more likely to take the team friendly discount to stay so we will see how it all works out. But Carolina, like I said, definitely going to be hitting uh, uh, some new players and having a different look next year for sure. Uh, some other coaching news. We got word today the Winnipeg Jets have finally settled on a new head coach, and that's assistant Scott Arneal. So no big shocker. He's kind of been considered the um, leading contender for quite some time. He filled in admirably a couple of times this past year when former head coach Rick Bonus had to be away from the team between him and his wife both having different medical issues throughout the year. Uh, and did, the team did really great in his absence, and, uh, and Arneal was you know, certainly uh, well respected for the job he did um, in that absence. So, not a big shocker in that regard. But there was lots of other bigger names with more experience in the market. So there was a talk that you know it's not a given that he gets the job. But there's already familiarity there. The players already know him, and they've already had a taste of him as a head coach for short spells a couple of times. So it's you know they did had a really good year in Winnipeg. Um, probably don't want to rock the boat too much. I want to kind of build upon what they have and see if they can be better for the playoffs. So simple move there and solution for the, the Jets coaching position. Another coaching update as well, the Vancouver Canucks. There was some talk that the Canucks may not be um, having Jeremy Carlton be their American Hockey League coach next year. I believe Carlton, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure he's on an expiring contract, but um, they were apparently open to him returning. But the feeling around the league was that he was probably exploring other opportunities. And it wasn't so much that Vancouver wanted to get rid of him or they wanted to replace him. Because for the most part, I think they were happy with the job he did. But he's obviously already had a taste of being an NHL head coach. Saw some NHL opportunities for him. He's rumored to be in the mix in San Jose. Or he may be able to get an NHL assistant coach job. 
So he on his own decided, I guess, to explore those opportunities and not come back. So the Vancouver Canucks have uh, brought back Manny Maholtra. So Maholtra, of course, uh, worked with the Canucks previously, was most recently an assistant coach with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, so, of course, we don't know exactly all the changes that will be with the Leafs staff, but with Sheldon Keefe being let go and Craig Berube being brought on, you know there's going to be some changes with the assistants for sure, uh, given that Berube's going to have at least a couple of his own people he's going to want to bring in. Um, so not a huge shocker there. So Mahalter goes back to Vancouver, somebody they're quite familiar with, uh, who becomes the head coach at Abbotsford, which is, you know, in some ways a, a promotional opportunity for him to be a head coach. So long term, I think he has aspirations of being an NHL head coach. So it makes sense from a learning and development standpoint for him. Lots of familiarity within the Canucks organization. So, um, yeah, it's a good good move on that front considering Carlton. Uh, on his own decided he wasn't returning now as i mentioned as well on the rumor front we got some ufa and some trade talk in the rumor mill today um the boston bruins we know that they certainly want to add some more speed more scoring to their lineup for sure according to don sweeney and cam neely which makes a lot of sense lots of speculation that elias lindholm will not be returning to the vancouver canucks when they were doing their end of season media um I would think based on his his comments and answers to questions, I got the impression that there was a really good chance he wouldn't be back in Vancouver. I think Vancouver will definitely want to talk to him about staying. Um, but usually when players say, oh, no, I haven't really thought about it, I'll talk to my agent here next week, and those types of answers, more often than not, they leave. And they you know, they know that they're probably not going to get the money they're looking for. For Vancouver to have a chance for Lindholm to stay, he'd have to take a discount uh, compared to what he's going to get on the market. And I just don't see him doing that. Uh, so, you know, the Bruins have been after him for a long time. Another name to watch when it comes to Boston is Chandler Stevenson. Obviously had a couple of good years or a few good years in Vegas uh, after landing there, um, after leaving the Washington Capitals organization. Bit of a late-blooming player, but certainly a guy that's uh, – you know, interesting for sure. Now, of course, uh, with the Bruins already having Coyle and Zaka at center this year, I don't think they necessarily need to add a bunch of centers. But at the same time, Zaka and Coyle are both plenty used to playing on the wing as well. So they can still play top six roles or middle six roles or what have you. I think for the most part, those two guys had, did a good job this past year. But if they could be slotted a little lower in the lineup and they could have some other guys come in, uh, to be honest, I think it'd be great for the team, for the depth, and for them personally to get better matchups. So, I really, if a guy like Lindholm came in and was top line center, I don't think that would be a bad thing for the Boston Bruins in the least. So, to me, Chandler Stevenson's more, on most teams, he's going to be a 2 3. Um, but obviously, in Vegas, he played a lot with Mark Stone and was a good fit there. So, we'll see. But a couple of names to watch when it comes to the Bruins. When it comes to the Maple Leafs, there's certainly lots to talk about there when it comes to UFAs and trades. On the UFA front, I've seen articles both from Pierre Lebron of The Athletic as well as Daily Faceoff projecting some of the um, free agent contracts that might be obtained by some of the Leaf guys. Most predominantly, Max Domi and Tyler Bertuzzi, who seem to get a lot of the attention there. Uh, there is belief uh, with the insider world that they've already had some degree of communication with Bertuzzi and Domi that there does seem to be mutual interest on both sides about working out a new contract to stay in. Obviously, for both players who took one-year deals, that term is going to be quite important to them coming up here and be able to stay for an extended time. So with that said, um, the belief is that you're probably looking at to really be sure that they're going to get it done. You might have to go to four or five-year deals on both of them. Now, not a given. Um, but that's what the belief is by some. Now, I've seen, for example, in, in Pierre Lebrun's article of The Athletic, which I did not agree with, he suggested that to get Domi, they might have to do like a five-year deal at five to six million. I'm like, you realize he took a one-year deal at three million and didn't even have a career season. How is he going to get that much more term and that much more money? To me, that's that's insane. Like, I wouldn't, I, I, I think Domi is perfect for Toronto. I think it'd be great for him to stay and great for the team, but there's no way they're going to offer him that kind of money. Now, Daily Faceoff had a projection of Domi getting a two-year deal at three and a half. So that takes what he had last year, gets him two years instead of one with a small raise from three to 3.5. That's a lot more reasonable. Um, to me, I don't even know if he really gets much of a raise. If they can offer him 
I think they might need to go more than two years, though. I think if they can get three or four years for Domi at three to three point five, then certainly I think um, they, they have a much better chance for him to work out. Now, when it comes to Bertuzzi, uh, the speculation there is he may be looking for closer to five million, maybe on a four-year deal. So we'll have to see. Clearly, like I said, there's interest, and another UFA name that was brought up. Because of the new head coach, Craig Berube, somebody who he's worked with for quite a number of years and obviously was quite fond of, especially when it comes to power play usage, was David Perron, who played last year in Detroit and is a UFA as well. I don't know how the Leafs could fit Perron in. Uh, I think Perron would be more of a pivot guy. If they can't get Bertuzzi and Domi both done, maybe they look to Perron as one of the replacements. Um, If they do trade Mitch Marner, which we don't know, then... Depending on what the return is, if they have an extra cap space and they can round out their roster more, Perron would be a great add for Toronto. I think Berube would love to have him, but I just don't know how they fit him in with the current setup. So, yeah, I, I can see the connection. I just don't see the cap world that it works. So, but like I said, if a Marner trade happens or if Bertuzzi or Domi do walk, then that makes sense. So we'll see. But uh, lots of decisions there to work out in uh, Toronto. And Pierre LeBron also mentions, though, that he's, like I said, that he thinks the Leafs are going to go big game hunting on a goalie. I uh, mentions Jacob Markstrom because of the connection to GM Brad True Living. Of course, he's the one who brought him to Calgary as a free agent son to a long-term deal, which obviously now he's a GM in Toronto, and Markstrom's been really good. So would he try to bring him to Toronto. We know that Markstrom is extremely likely to get traded. Almost went to the New Jersey Devils uh, at the trade deadline. Seemed to be quite grumpy that he was asked to waive and was okay with the trade, and then it never happened. We don't know what caused the deal to fall through for sure, but the belief is that ownership got involved and either didn't want to do the salary retention or didn't want the team to be moving another star player. One of the two or a combination of both. Um, but this time around, certainly it's expected that he'd like to go. So Markstrom's name is out there. We know UC Saros has a possibility out of Nashville. Um, Barry Trotz has talked about signing Saros. I personally don't know that they're going to do that. Uh, it could be more of a ploy to boost his value and to kind of get teams to up their offers. But, you know, to me, Saros to some degree would make sense for Toronto. A lot of talk about Marner for Saros type of trade. Might not be one for one. But those would be the building blocks around a deal between those two clubs. Um, if that did happen, that's how they'd go about getting their goalie for sure. But now, for, you know, take a look at Calgary, though. For them to trade with for Markstrom, what are they going to give up, right? You know, Marner is the biggest trade chip if they're going to do something significant with that team. And he could bring in a star goalie and other pieces, too. Um Then there's Jordan Bennington in St. Louis, the former Stanley Cup winning goalie with Craig Berube, who I talked about last week as maybe being an option that, you know, the Blues had been rumored last year to consider moving Bennington. He did have a better season. Uh, They do have Joel Holfer kind of waiting to get a bigger role. Would they consider that? You know, he's signed for three more years at $6 million. I think it's something that they would seriously look at. Uh, But again, what would Toronto have to trade to St. Louis for Bennington? or to Calgary for Markstrom. Because I don't think either of those teams are taking Mitch Marner. And I don't know that Mitch Marner wants to go to either of those teams, no offense to their fans. So, at the same time, I think Mitch Marner would go to would go to Nashville. I bet you he'd go to Vegas. He might go to one of the Florida teams. Like, if he's going to get moved, he's going to be extremely picky. And I wouldn't be shocked if he goes to somewhere where, A, he can kind of fly under the radar a little bit, Less media attention. And you know what? If it wouldn't hurt if it was one of those areas with no state tax. Uh, you know, the new Utah team is another prime example. Those are all teams that I would think are most likely in the mix should they decide to move Marner and he agree to it. Um, however, you know, at the same time, like, you know, these other deals, I don't know. Uh, for, for them to go big game hunting on a goalie, Markstrom could be possible. Bennington could be possible. I just don't know who, who do they trade. You know, looking at besides Marner, you got maybe Nick Robertson, maybe their 2024 first round pick. Would they consider moving one of the top prospects like Frazier Minton? Maybe. I don't think they'd move Easton Cowan. I think he's been too good. Minton, maybe. Like, you know, the, I'm not sure if that's going to get it done. Now, Timothy Lilgren's name has been out there too. Um, so, would. A, a package of Lilgren, Robertson, and a first or something like that, get it done for one of those goalies? I don't know that it would. It may be, but it's a tough call. Tough call for sure. And Marty Natchez is getting a lot of play right now in the media about 
We know that he's very likely getting traded to the Carolina. Um, I know there's lots of talk between Elliot Friedman and some other insiders around Natchez right now. I mentioned the Canucks were very interested in Natchez before. Earlier this year, before the Canucks signed Elias Pettersson to the long-term deal, they were concerned that he may not sign. And they did explore some trade talks. And I think they mainly did it, to be honest, to kind of give him something to be concerned about and convince them to like, let's get this done because we, we need the certainty here. So they got the deal done. So obviously the trade wasn't real serious, but when they did have some talks, the, the connects were focused on Carolina as being one of the prime landing spots for Pedersen and Natchez was involved. So we know they liked the player and there's some talk that they could revisit that with maybe Philip Ronick going the other way. Not that the connects don't like Philip Ronick, but the belief is he's looking for an $8 million contract. I just think they should be real careful here. I mean, not to say the Natchez couldn't fit there, but you got to remember, Marty Natchez wants a bigger role, more power play time, first line minutes. He's not going to get that in Vancouver. You've got Pedersen, Miller, Besser. Like, could he fit in their top six? Yes, but he's he's going to probably be their fourth or fifth top forward. I just don't know that they're going to give him what he wants. And you better be careful about treating Philip Ronick. I know he struggled in the second half of the year, but right-hand defensemen who can produce offense are hard to come by in this league. And he's still young. He's got a great shot. They gave up a good price tag to get him out of Detroit. Seems to, you know, Quinn Hughes seems to really like playing with him. Not saying don't treat him for sure, but I just think they need to be careful. A lot of fans are quite happy right now to put him up on the block to get Natchez. I'm like, I don't know. I love Marty Natchez as a player. I just don't know that I would do that deal if I'm Vancouver. But that's out there in the rumor mill of something that could happen. I know Friedman also brought up the Boston Bruins because we know that the Hurricanes might make a move to solidify the goaltending situation next year. Um, I don't think they were thrilled with how Freddie Anderson played in the critical games that ended up getting them eliminated. Um, so he was mentioned about Boston being interested in Natchez, uh, which, again, makes a lot of sense with Linus Allmark maybe being the Play it goes the other way. Only problem with that is you got Freddie Anderson and Kachekov both on and Spencer Martin for next year. So one of those goalies are going to have to go to Boston to work with Jeremy Swayman. None of the goalies, of course, with Carolina are making a ton of money, which makes it easier to do. It wouldn't be Kachekov. It would have to be Anderson or Martin. you think Anderson would have to go, though, off the roster. I think they're okay with Martin being a number three, but they can't have, you know, Anderson, Kachekov, and... Um, and Allmark, I mean, that's too much. So Anderson would have to be moved either to Boston in that trade or elsewhere. Freddie Anderson does have a modified no trade where he can block 15 teams, so that complicates things as well. So again, Allmark to Carolina, does it make some sense? Yes, for, for Natchez. It, it makes more sense to me than the Vancouver trade does, um, in a sense. But um, I don't know. It's complicated, though. It'd have to be more than a one-for-one, one, right? You'd have to probably have Natchez and maybe Freddie Anderson go to Boston um, in exchange for Allmark and something else. I'm not sure what that something else would be, but something else with them. Um, that could work, whereas maybe the tandem next year in Boston is Swayman and Anderson. That that could still be a really good tandem for Boston. Um, you know, and Natchez fits well with their top six. Could definitely get top line minutes. Uh, obviously could play with Pasternak. So, I mean, to me, like, there's lots to like about that. Whereas, the, to me, on the other side of it with the uh, Canuck deal, not that it doesn't make sense. I just, Carolina's perspective, if they can get Hronick out of Vancouver to fill a role, I mean, at the same time, if he's insist on an $8 million, you know darn well Carolina's not giving him that. They are very notorious with having a cutoff point. And if they don't like your number, they'll be like, okay, this is the max you're getting. And if you don't like it, shop yourself. Come back to us if you if you can't find it, and we'll work out a cheaper deal. That's been their philosophy, and for the most part, it's worked. So, you know, I guess a lot of that would have to depend on the extension talks. And the same thing for Natchez, right? I think they both teams would have to allow discussions to take place to see if there was a fit contract-wise and then make it happen if it works out that way. So we'll see. But there's lots of other teams like Montreal, Philadelphia, um I've heard some degree Ottawa. I'm not sure how serious they would be. 
um, and a few others around H's. There's going to be lots of interest in Marty H's. He's a heck of a player. So we'll see what happens. Lots of talk and um, soon to be lots of action. What we said, we've had some trades lately as well. We had a trade earlier with some draft picks between the Blackhawks and the Islanders. Check out that video on the channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, some you know a trade well ahead of the draft, just involving picks, which is unusual. We had the Ryan McDonough trade a few uh, few days ago as well. So things are picking up. Uh, we'll have to see how things go here, but it's going to be a very busy time here within the next month. Lots of uh, player movement. So let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.